Today, I have decided to do some testing on my UPS to see how the output voltage looks. So, I have an incandescent and a LED light bulb as a load, as you can see. Right now, only the LED is plugged in. And I have the green graphs are the voltage at the output or the UPS. So, currently, that is the mains and the FFT, so the frequency. And we can see that there's a frequency spike at 48.83 Hz, which is close to 50, as it is supposed to be. Here there is uh, the current that is going into like, the light bulb. Currently the switch is off, so this is like noise. Um, this is the FFT of the... So if we turn on the LED, we can do freeze, and I'll turn on the LED. We can see that this is always the sine wave remains, and this is the not sine wave of the LED. This it uh, consumes more power at the before the peak when the FBR for bridge rectifier is charging and it consumes almost no power when the voltage is close to zero. For example here we have minus 70 volts and the current is minus 80 milliamps. So that could again just be noise. With no load it says oh yes okay it's basically noise. Now we can switch the LED for an uh, incandescent light bulb. The LED is uh, 6.3 watts. This incandescent light bulb is 60 watts. We now use LEDs because incandescent is the light is similar. So I can turn on the incandescent and to adjust this with the pieces of more power. You freeze. So we can see since the incandescent bulb is simply a resistor, a resistor that emits light, this, the current is equal to the voltage. So the peaks of current are in the same place as the peaks of voltage. I would like to try the UPS, how it looks. So I turn on the UPS and freeze. Okay, this is the UPS's waveform. So as you can see, not the cleanest sine wave, the square wave. You can also see that there are peaks of uh, 464 volts instead of the 300 volts of normal mains. You can also see a difference in harmonics. We still have that peak at 48.83 Hz, but you also have all of these peaks which come with square waves. See? With the normal mains, we only have... Oh, there are some very small peaks here. Okay. Now we can try with the incandescent bulb. So I switch on the UPS, freeze and turn off the bulb. And you can see that again the voltage and the current are basically equal in shape, not in amount, because we have here 0.34 amps and here 404.3 volts. Well, then we can deduce that the voltage drops when we attach the light bulb. So we can zoom out, and if I turn on the light bulb, yes, voltage drops. I want to freeze. Okay, good. And we can see that the voltage before has peaks of 439. Currently, the voltage isn't very constant. When we turn on the light bulb, the peaks go to 272 volts, which is quite low, but then they go back up, though they don't ever reach as high as before. 382 peak instead of 440. Let's try with the LED bulb, as that would be more, I guess it should be more interesting. Sure? So we again have this waveform, which is not equal to the waveform of the voltage. We can also see that the peak current is 0 0.30 milliamps instead of the 300 milliamps of the incandescent bulb, which means about one-tenth the power, which is, well, it does exactly it since it's 6.3 watts instead of 60 watts, so about a tenth. We turn on the UPS and the waveform is quite different of the LED. 
The reason I'm showing this with the LED too is because the LED has a full bridge rectifier, like a computer power supply, which is what you're supposed to attach to that since those are written. Only plug in computer and nothing else. You're not supposed to plug in that. So it is uh, so a computer would draw a waveform similar to this. We can see that the peaks are quite a bit higher, almost 10 times the current, but there's lots of nothing, there's no current, which is, yeah, because it only draws current at the peak or at the start of the square wave, and then it draws little current, as you can see here, and then as the voltage drops, the current goes to zero. Does the voltage drop? And how much does it drop when I turn on the LED? Uh, not much, apparently. But it does sort of change. Oh, okay, so LED lights do consume electricity, but a lot less than incandescent light bulbs. The last thing that I would like to see, the amount of time that the UPS is not giving you current. So, for example, if you have a computer plugged in and the there's a blackout for how long will your computer not have power whilst the UPS is turning on. So I'll go back to the incandescent. Oh, actually, we don't need any load for this. So do on freeze, turn on and do freeze. And I'm not, I didn't do a good freeze. Oh no, okay, good. So we can zoom in here and we see here's the main sine wave. Then here it goes to zero. So here's not how it's supposed to be. So an LED light would probably draw very little current here. And we are to here. So if you're using an LED, you don't have power for... Well, let's see. So an LED only uses lights on peaks. So usually it gets a v about like 9 milliseconds. From this to this, we have... 12 milliseconds, so that would be 3 milliseconds of no power if you're using a DC to DC converter, so a switched mode power supply in your ones. If you're using a transformer, then it would probably act an incandescent bulb since it is an inductor and inductors act like resistors with AC, they limit current. So let's try with incandescent bulb. Let's see the amount of zero power is different. It will probably be less since the incandescent bulb would draw power even here. So then zero current would probably be this long or two milliseconds. Let's see. Turn on the light bulb please. and adjust this. Turn this off. We have that. I need to freeze in the right moment. And there. Turn off the incandescent bulb. You zoom out, and we have from sine wave to here. Though I guess you should be looking at current. The current stays at about zero. For there is small current here. It's difficult to say with the incandescent bulb, since even when there is continuous power coming from the UPS. For this long, there's about 0 amps, 0 0.07, yeah, that's about 0, also because there is some noise in all my wires. So I guess that if you have a switch to mode power supply, your gap will probably be smaller than if you have a transformer-based power supply. And there's the fact that switch to mode power supplies have very big capacitors inside, which means that even if the current is out for like 10 milliseconds, there wouldn't be a big output. So yeah, another bonus of LED lights and switched mode power supplies. Okay, well I don't have really anything else I can add. I don't have anything to add. So bye.